Ah, the 1990s. It was only fitting that humanity would have one last crazy decade before plunging into the next millennium. It was an iconic era that broke new ground and unleashed fresh ideas and trends upon the world. But if you are talking to a kid who grew up in the 1990s, there's one thing, one word that basically represents their entire childhood. Nickelodeon, one of the undisputed kings of cartoons from the 90s. Speaking of cartoons and unexpected segues, Cartoon Amino. So it should be no surprise that I love cartoons and I love talking about cartoons. So it only makes sense that I would use an app that is all about cartoons. Cartoon Amino is a mobile community for animation fans. It's like a Tumblr and a subreddit fused. It's a place where you can read news, post articles, and chat about cartoons to your heart's content. And God almighty, there are GIFs everywhere. You can share art and make polls about whatever you want. Ew, not that. I actually have a poll of my own going on right now. Who made the better cartoons in the 90s? Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network? So go and download the free app, follow me on Amino Cartoon, and tell me what you think. To be perfectly honest though, only 90s kids can actually answer this question. No one else would understand. Remember the 90s? The 90s were so much better. We grew up with Cartoon Cartoon Friday and Nickelodeon, <sighs> which is a shadow of its former self now. Why is that? Why has the network fallen so far from grace? What ruined Nickelodeon? Well, in order for me to answer this question, we need to take a closer look at the origins of the first network for kids. Real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to my friend Jim who helped me write and to research this video. Without his help, this video wouldn't exist. So thank you, Jim, and you all should go check out his channel. Okay, so back in the late 1970s, Nickelodeon went by a different name and that was Pinwheel. Now Pinwheel itself was a children's variety program that aired on a network in Columbus, Ohio. It was eventually purchased by Warner Cable and was rebranded in 1979 under the new name of Nickelodeon. What followed were years of experimentation. Nickelodeon continued to air Pinwheel, but they also featured other programs. They wanted to see what would work and and what these younger audiences would enjoy. America Goes Bananas, Live Wire, and Video Comics to name a few. Like, they actually had a show where the narrator would read DC Comics with the camera panning over the images. You can't do that on television is considered to be the first big hit of the network. It's a sketch comedy and variety show that originally aired in Canada, but was brought over to Nick. It was fun, popular, and also coined the iconic slime that would be associated with Nickelodeon for many years to come. During the early 1980s, the network had another makeover. Its old logo was ditched and was replaced with the orange splat with the balloon font. They also created new jingles and IDs for the network in order to give it a fresh look. <laughs> Well, it worked. Nick was dominating as the children's network and kept pushing forward. More changes to follow included the addition of Nick at Night, Nick Jr., and the Kids' Choice Awards. Also, Warner Cable decided to sell the network in 1986 to Viacom. <laughs> that was weird. Viacom. Huh. Nick continued its creative streak in the early 1990s with more original programming. Hey Dude, Salute Your Shorts, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Clarissa Explains It All, and The Adventures of Pete and Pete. There was so much to pick from and it all focused on kids. They finally had a network to call their own. But something was missing, a very important piece, something that would redefine the network and usher in a new era of kid entertainment. Nick Tunes. On August 11th, 1991, Nickelodeon introduced three original animated programs, Rugrats, Doug, and Ren Stimpy. 
The network was initially against cartoons and thought they would be too expensive. And they weren't wrong. These shows were not cheap to make, but eventually became very successful. It opened a new path for Nick, and it grew over time. Rocco's Modern Life, Ah, Real Monsters, Kablam, Hey Arnold, The Angry Beavers, Cat Dog, The Wild Thornberries, As Told by Ginger, Invader Zim, Fairly Odd Parents, My Life as a Teenage Robot, Avatar, The Last Airbender. Nickelodeon was kicking butt with cartoons and was on fire through the 1990s and early 2000s. They also pushed forward with their live action comedies and game shows. All That, The Amanda Show, Keenan and Kel, The Legends of the Hidden Temple, Guts, Wild and Crazy Kids, Double Dare. Nickelodeon was a force to be reckoned with when it came to television. They ruled the 1990s and created a dynasty of entertainment that was unlike anything else. They had variety. They had talent. They had momentum. All of these wonderful traits that led to the growth of Nickelodeon. And in the early 2000s, it all started to fall apart. So what happened? Who or what is responsible for shrinking the creative focus and variety of the network? What ruined Nickelodeon? It's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Duh. It's Spongebob. Now hear me out, don't turn the video off just yet. I actually have an argument that isn't entirely subjective, but before I explain it, I do need to set the playing field. Before the advent of Spongebob, Nickelodeon was targeting the 8pm time slot. This was a big deal, since it meant the network was taking on primetime television. In 1996 and 97, Nick noticed that there was a demand for more family-oriented programming. Shows at the time, like Friends, were popular, but it kind of alienated families in the audience. They did not want to watch this kind of content with their kids, so Nickelodeon decided to step in and provide shows that would be more ideal for this demographic. This set the board for a more corporate version of Nickelodeon. They saw success, but it also started to weed out shows that were different. Now, that isn't to say that they got rid of weird shows entirely, but the direction definitely started to shift. To quote the creator of Hey Arnold, Craig Bartlett, every year they got bigger and more corporate than the year before. While Herb was running things, it just grew more and more corporate, and less like you have a personal touch. It was probably just inevitable that that was the way it was going to go. It wasn't Herb's fault. Herb's Nick was still a great place to be, but each year it got bigger and more out of control. That was the trend on the horizon. And then, the sponge arrived. Now, when it comes to Nickelodeon, the undisputed heavyweight champ is SpongeBob SquarePants. It premiered in 1999, so it was around for the very tail end of the 90s. When I was a kid, I saw Rugrats as the king of Nickelodeon, and there's evidence of that. It had three theatrical movies, and it even had a spin-off series. But then this quirky yellow sponge surfaced and turned everything upside down. He and his friends were a hit, and it eventually became the most popular show on the network. It was funny, different, easy to watch, and just an overall great cartoon. I was in middle school when Spongebob was airing, so I wasn't really a little kid anymore. But that didn't matter though. All of my friends loved it and we would constantly talk about our favorite episodes during lunch. In late 2004, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie was released, and it was quite successful. It cost $30 million to make, and they made $140 million from it, and that's not including merchandise. After the movie, Steven Hillenburg, the creator of the show, stepped down and was absent for the next few years. He eventually returned and assisted with another SpongeBob movie. It too was a hit and now Steven works on the animated show again. 
Yet people look at Spongebob and see a Simpsons problem. As in, when is this show going to be over? How long can it last? There is a third movie planned for 2019. That means that Spongebob has been the tip of the spear for Nick for almost two decades. Where is the variety? Why has Nickelodeon placed all of their chips on Spongebob? When Rugrats was number one, at least it had friendly competition, but now? Huh. All I see is yellow. I mentioned earlier how Nick was becoming more corporate. Well, that ties in with SpongeBob. Basically, the network found something that worked. It worked really well. It made them lots of money. Yeah, they have their other programs, but none of them get the SpongeBob SquarePants treatment, and it shows. Avatar The Last Airbender is a great example of this. This amazing action cartoon was mature, entertaining, and opened the door for many possibilities. And what came of it? A god-awful movie, and then a sequel that barely made it across the finish line. Now, I'm not saying that The Legend of Korra is bad. The show itself was good, but Nickelodeon failed to utilize it. I mean, they have this amazing property, and they couldn't even figure out how to succeed with it. For crying out loud, the last season wasn't even aired on the network, but their website instead. Why couldn't they have done both? It's almost like they have forgotten how to produce and market a show outside of Spongebob. So we know that Nickelodeon has become more corporate. We know that they are hyper-focused on Spongebob. And we know that they screwed up with reaching the full potential of Avatar. But the biggest blunder Nickelodeon ever suffered was failing to recognize a cartoon that could have been a game changer for them. <laughs> Adventure Time, a show that basically gave a breath of life to Cartoon Network. Heck, it basically kicked off the cartoon revival that we are currently seeing on television. Back in 2007, the pilot for Adventure Time aired on Nickelodeon. That pilot was then uploaded to the internet and people fell in love with it. Pendleton Ward, the creator of the show, and Frederator Studios, the guys who funded it, pitched the idea to Nickelodeon. <sighs> and they turned it down. Twice. Rumor says that they passed on it and decided to go with Fanboy and Chum Chum instead. You done fucked up now! Now, I wasn't there for the board meeting. I don't know if there was some logic for that decision with Nick. But how in the hell can you screw up that badly? Why wouldn't you want this show? It was absolutely ripe for the taking. And Nick said no. Well, thank goodness Cartoon Network put it to work. They totally made bank on Adventure Time, and it jump-started the cartoon revival we are currently seeing. This is a testament to how far Nickelodeon has fallen. They went corporate, they are hyper-focused on Spongebob, and they no longer take chances. They are stuck, and the daring and creative spirit that led to the growth and success of the network, well, it isn't really there anymore, and all because they want to play it safe. Overall, it's plain to see how far Nickelodeon has fallen. Yes, they still make a profit, but the traits that made them stand out no longer shine like they used to. I feel that the people at Nick who are currently in charge are afraid to take big chances. Cartoon Network and Disney have taken these leaps of faith and they have paid off. Steven Universe, Regular Show, Gravity Falls, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, these are all awesome programs. I think that Nickelodeon is starting to understand that the landscape has shifted and they are kind of moving in the right direction. The Loud House and Harvey Beaks are great shows and they are different from the status quo on Nickelodeon. Also, there is supposed to be a new Hey Arnold and a Rocco's Modern Life movie. 1990s nostalgia is big right now, so it's very possible that Nick is reviving their old shows one at a time. I don't want to get ahead of myself though. I want to see how it plays out. They really haven't earned my trust as of late, but 
It's hard not to root for a network that was basically your entire childhood. Well, at least my childhood. Despite recent events in history, you cannot deny what Nickelodeon has achieved as a network. They broke ground in the 1980s and 90s and created a channel that kids could call home. Cartoon Network wouldn't have pushed their original programming as hard if it wasn't for the competition that Nickelodeon was creating. I know you are down, Nickelodeon. I know that you aren't the same as you used to be, but I have faith. I think change is around the corner. We will just have to wait and see what the future has in store. But you know, if you need some ideas, well, I have some recommendations. And don't you ever bring back him.